This is Dr. Tom Rozelle. After 43 years of practice and over a million patient visits, the Rozelle Center for Healing knows what works and knows how you can take control of your health and wellness. My team of doctors practice 21st century integrative medicine. Whether you suffer from chronic pain and fatigue, allergies or headaches, we can help. Take charge of your health before it's too late. Make an appointment today. Call 703-698-7117 or visit online at rosellecare.com. That's rosellecare.com. The information provided on Dr. Tom Rosell Live by Dr. Tom Rosell DC, interview guests, show co-hosts, or substitute hosts is not intended or implied to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. It is for general information purposes only. Information from this broadcast should not replace the appropriate consultation and examination process by a licensed physician. Always consult your own physician prior to changing any current medical directive or prescription. Dr. Tom Rosell Live, right now on 105.9 FM WMAL. Welcome, guys. Welcome to Dr. Tom Rizal Live. It is indeed live, and it's a beautiful, beautiful day. Hopefully this weekend you've gotten outside and enjoyed that weather. I mean, it's like a reprieve after all the craziness and the, the wet and the hot and so forth and so on, but it's uh, it's been wild. I had a great time yesterday. We had uh, the opportunity of spending uh, the day with family, and my oldest grandson, who is 14 and a half, coming up on 25, I mean 15 pretty quickly, had uh, made his uh, confirmation in our church. And, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a transition. It's a, a, a transition from being a, a young man into an adult and seeing the, you know, the process, the progression of something that's very beautiful. And, you know, we, uh, we spent the day with our family. And hopefully, and I bring it up simply this. In the world of this craziness that we have going on, there's beauty to be found. And take a moment and look around you and enjoy the magnificence of your relationships, of the people that you're with. Yeah, if we focus on what's negative, guess what we're going to see? We're going to see negative. But if you focus on what's positive and what's beautiful, you're going to see those things that match up to that that challenge. So uh, go outside today and look at all the good things, you know, engage with people that, you know, that you know, and say hello to people and don't be afraid. It's all good. You know, nobody's going to bite you and you're not going to get this silliness just by saying hello to somebody and walking by. And, you know, that's who I am. I have always looked at the good out there and there's a lot of good. And I just wanted to share that with you because it was really important uh, for us yesterday to kind of break the mold, if you will, break the, the craziness for a little bit of time. And, you know, this coming weekend, not today, obviously, but a week from today uh, for uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I'm going to be teaching a group of doctors uh, in the second series, the second round of classes. There are going to be probably 37 to 40 doctors that are going to fly in all over the from all over the country. And we're going to be talking about uh, liver detoxification, and we're going to talk about how the structural neurological platforms relate to that, symptoms that show up in their patient bases, and then how to identify them, but more importantly, how to fix them. So I'm excited. That's going to be a fun time. But I have a very interesting show for you today. We're going to talk about the brain a little bit. We're going to talk about um, what happens when you're stressed and the impact that it has, uh, particularly if you're not sleeping. You know, we're going to we're going to go to that round a little bit. I want to talk to, uh, touch on that first. You know, when you're dealing with someone who is stressed and they're tossing and turning, stress comes from all different things. Maybe it's dietary stress. You're eating things that you shouldn't be eating. Maybe it is emotional stress or maybe it is pain stress. And we're getting pain in the second uh, part of the program and allow you to give us uh, what's going on with you? And by the way, give us a call here at 888 That's 888 And I'd love to take your calls on anything that you want to talk about today. So let's talk about uh, this thing that happens to your body when you don't sleep, right? Well, sleep deprivation, if you will, that inability to stay asleep and get your body to repair triggers abnormal reactions in these cells within your brain. Uh, they're called astrocytes. 
and look them up. They're kind of cool, cool things. And these guys are involved in clearing the brain out of toxins, but also in reforming regeneration. You know, kind of an aside, years ago, it was thought that if you damaged your brain, you know, if you destroyed your brain cells, you couldn't re regrow them. Now, through the world of epigenetics and regenerative medicine, we're finding that the brain will actually restore itself under the right conditions. So let me tell you a little bit about these guys, these astrocytes. So these astrocytes are functioning abnormally, right? When they are doing that, they can eat and destroy a healthy brain. And the synapses, the communication, the nerve ending from one to the other. So it dramatically increases your risk of neurodegenerative diseases and even Alzheimer's dramatically increases in its risk capacity. So you got to sleep, my friends, and there's a whole lot of things that you can do to make that happen. Now, consistent sleep has to start with the same schedule all the time. You know, if you don't have to get up in the mornings, you decide to stay up to one o'clock in the morning or two o'clock in the morning or 2.30, you're not getting consistent sleep. You know, if you're used to going to bed at 10.30 or 11 o'clock and then sleeping through, because guess what's going to happen? That 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning, if you're used to getting up at 5.30 or 11, your body is kind of programmed to do that, and you're going to start waking up. So now you've only had about four hours, maybe four and a half hours of deep sleep. You said, yeah, but, you know, it's my time, and I want to watch a little bit of this. I want to read a book. I want to, I'm involved in this. Uh, figured out another time to do it because you're causing – problems you're you know you have to be aware just on an intuitive basis that good sleep scheduling is vital to your life you've all experienced it but the other piece is if you don't get enough uh, sleep your brain actually starts to eat itself it eats itself now i don't mean that in a little sense of the word that it goes you know crunch and munch but you know, there's a lot of research, and there's one that came out from the, Mar the Marquis Polytechnic University in Italy, and it shows that these little cells that I just told you about, these astrocytes, they're a type of glial cell, G-L-I-A-L, glial cell in the brain, and it normally gets rid of unnecessary stimulation, okay, communication. And what happens, it starts to break down healthy nerve communication areas. They're called synapses. And this is due to chronic sleep deprivation. And they did this not only with animals, but then they extended the study to people who habitually in their history didn't sleep much, right? So in a study uh, that they did, they divided, uh, I think, laboratory animals into four groups. And, you know, these were well rested and then those that periodically woken up and then uh, – you know, those that were kept awake for additional eight hours after they, they had light sleep and then, you know, sleep that were completely deprived for four to five days straight. And they found some very interesting things that came back. And they, they looked at these silly cells, these astrocytes, and, you know, in each of the groups. And in the people who were well-rested, or the, well -rested, the animals, the laboratory animals that were well-rested, about 6% of the brain synapses, uh, you know, had astrocyte activity and the number slightly jumped about 7.4, 7.5 in these animals that were awakened, you know, spontaneously, you know, on a regular basis. Uh, but the mice that were sleep deprived and chronically sleep deprived and the rats that were chronically sleep deprived and then going to larger animals, uh, the numbers rose dramatically all the way up to 13 and a half percent that's significant so what i'm trying to tell you is this if you're not sleeping you got a problem and so we want to talk about how you sleep because sleep is necessary recovery sleep is necessary for uh immunological response sleep is necessary to decrease inflammation sleep is necessary to heal your joints but if you don't want to lose that what did i walk into the kitchen for you know type of thing and and you know what what am i doing out here i walked into the room to do something i can't remember why i'm here and you're not 99 years old in a brain that has decreased but matter of fact there's a lot of 99 year olds that are smarter than we are uh but here's the deal but when you don't get enough sleep these cells I'm telling you about, these little astrocytes uh, actually start to exhibit uh, behavior similar to these called their microglial cells. And, you know, what happens is that we begin to see 
an excess of clearing and physiological, this is a process called phagocytosis within, within the brain, and the brain begins to break down and you begin to see things happen that shouldn't happen. So let's talk about that a little bit because, it's, and I'm gonna give you a fix, by the way, this is not just me telling you you've got a bad thing going on, but we have to fix it as well, right? So what causes and what other problems cause sleep deprivation or the inability to get sound sleep or stay asleep or go into you know, a good quality sleep situation? You know, it can lead to several uh, chronic conditions, you know, over a period of time. First, it goes into acute phase, like, oh, my God, where did this happen? And then it just never goes away. So it can increase your risk of accidents due to the, uh, the inability to stay focused, right? And your reaction times get much longer. They're not quick anymore. And that's not good. So think about it. If you're not sleeping, you get in the car and you should be able to break fast. Now you can't. And remember that because the second part of the program, we're going to talk a little bit about what happens with trauma to the head and neck as well. So increased risk of accidents because you're not aware. You know, I'm a pilot, I have a pilot's license and there's this thing called situational awareness, which we should have in everything that we do anyway, but I bring it up simply because it's, it's a term that's used uh, throughout that field. Being aware of everything around you at all times, not just be singular focus and be able to block, you have to be aware. And when you're not sleeping, your brain begins to become very linear instead of broad-based and it can't see, if you will, we'll use that expression, outside of what it is that you're focusing on and that begins to be interrupted as well. You become lackadaisical, lack of motivation. Your heart uh, is at greater risk. Diabetes and high blood pressure and heart disease risk levels go through the ceiling because you're not sleeping. Patients who come into our office that have any of these things, if I if they're not sleeping, they're not going to recover. And we have to be able to, you know, fix that and turn it around. We talk about the immune system and the ability to infection and sleep and you're at a much higher risk from all kinds of things. And guess what happens? You're not going to live longer. Your life expectancy is going to shorten up. You've got to sleep. There's going to be fatigue. You're going to be triggered right? It's like you have a short temper and you want to bite people. You just, you're, you're not the calm, easy, collective person that you used to be. Uh, your productivity is aberrant. So you can't get as much out in, in the period of time. So, you know, we usually say, well, I'm getting older. No, it's because you're not sleeping. Part of the reason, if you get yourself back into a good restorative sleep, then guess what? You will be much more productive. Um, and, when you do that, the likelihood of increasing drug abuse, alcohol abuse, dramatically goes up. So the question becomes, you know, what's it to do? How much sleep should I be getting? When we're on the planet up until we're really about five years old, we should be getting a lot of sleep. Start out, you know, you'll see more, most infants sleep somewhere between 14 to 17 hours a day. And then we get a little older, we go into the last part, and then we're, we're up to about 15 hours, 10 to 15 hours. Uh, but generally, you know, 12, 13, 14 hours. Then we're about a year of age, we get up to about 11 to 14 hours and three to five was up a little higher. So by the time we're, you know, teenage years, even though we think teenagers want to sleep all the time, we're in the neighborhood of about eight to 10 hours. We're going to talk about that. I'm going to show you how you fix this. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizal Live. I got a lot of stuff for you today. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. Dr. Tom Rizal here. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizal Live. Unfortunately, we had a little bit of a technical glip and break in the presentation. I beg your forgiveness, so we'll see if we can get it fixed so it doesn't happen again. We're talking about your brain and its need for sleep and what happens when you don't get enough and the breakdown of communication and so forth. It's not, uh, it's not okay when we don't sleep because we, we push, we push, we push. You know, I went through years of doing that myself and where I'd function at about five hours sleep a night, five and a half hours sleep, and it caught me. I had to stop. And fortunately, there's words to pre uh, prevent and prepare. We'll talk about it as we second half. But in the meantime, let's go. To I thank you for being patient. How can I help you, sir? Hey, Tom. Ivan. Hey. Ivan here. Uh, you know me. 
uh, I'm calling about my brother. When he was in the Air Force, he worked with a lot of uh, spent uranium and lead from fuel because he was a fuel system uh, maintenance person. And at that time, the airplanes they were flying had metal tanks instead of bladders. And yep. he now has an awful lot of uranium and lead in his brain. He has tried chelation. That worked, but uh, I, don't, I don't know what can be done now I, unless uh, you're suggesting chelation. I don't know. Well, chelation works really well, but you have to have somebody that knows what they're doing, particularly with that uh, type of situation. It has to be done gently and slowly uh, and begin to make sure that it gets out of the body so the body doesn't reabsorb it. The biggest problem with a lot of people doing chelating processes is, is that they don't fix the intestinal tract and kidney uh, while they're doing it. What happens, we dump all this stuff in and then it gets reabsorbed through the intestinal lining, but it also gets reprocessed and can help damage the uh, the kidneys. So, you know, without knowing a lot, it, it, if, uh, you know, I'm just extending thought process at this point. So if he's dealing with fuel tanks, there's a lot of uh, chemistry that's going to be residual within there, but also the lead that's that they use to seal the tanks, uh, the the metal itself that makes it up, so you're dealing with uh, aluminum processes, you're dealing with lead. All of those can cause significant uh, deterioration, destruction. So what has to be done is a slow, gentle, continual chelating process. Uh, but the brain will, if you, can, if you can take the load off the brain, the brain can be reinstituted. What I mean by that is through brain mapping, uh, using nutrient bases like magnesium 3 and 8, uh, DHA, uh, your anti-inflammatories, it, it depends on him. Proteolytic enzymes can be useful as well, but you have to get those that load off. You have to make sure that the body doesn't reabsorb those things, and then you have to make sure that we re-educate as well as keeping the inflammatory process down. It's a, it's a tough situation. It's, uh, you know, I've seen too much of that over the years. When the guys uh, came back from the first Iraq war, uh, when Papa Bush was, was in office, I saw a lot of these guys come back with all kinds of things from chemical exposures, but also heavy metals, and they were extremely damaging uh, to the body. The problem is that outside of the natural world, unless it's blatant like uh, lead, which will show up in bone uh, as rings uh, in different areas around the bone, uh, they don't look for it. They just say, well, those are the things that happen and the person's getting older, And but that's not, not the case. There's a lot that you can do to uh, one, detoxify, but it's an ongoing process. It's not something that can just be done one time. Now, here's the other piece. If there's that type of metal exposure and the patient also has dental fillings, now you're dealing with mercury, now you're dealing with nickel, um, now you've just compounded the problem. If they've had vaccines, inoculations, those of us who've been in the military, we've had all kinds of things injected into our bodies. And you know, unless you take the time to get rid of that, as we get older, where our body can't become as efficient as it used to be in getting rid of things, now we start seeing the symptoms of that. But having said that, there's still a lot that can be done. Ivan, talk to me at the office and we'll see what we can do to give you a little bit more direction. If you're listening to Dr. Tom Rizal Live. We're coming up to the bottom of the program. Don't go away, I have a lot more for you today. Dr. Tom Rosell Live continues now on 105.9 FM, WMAL. Welcome back, everybody. Dr. Tom Rosell here. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rosell Live. Indeed, I am, as always, trying to bring you the most intimate information I possibly can in the healthcare arena. By the way, those of you who are following me on Facebook, uh, the last one that I, uh, uh, the last uh, Facebook Live that I put out, which was Wednesday night, uh, I think you're going to enjoy it. Over a thousand people have already viewed it. So uh, go to Facebook and go to my website. And by the way, you don't have to befriend me. Just sneak in and take a look and check this out. I put things uh, on there for you, information that I think that you enjoy, some on vaccinations, some on other areas of health. But um, take a look. Make it happen. What I can do, and if, as always, if there's anything do for you. When I'm not here on the radio, simply go to Roselle 
healthcare.com. Send a message to one of us and we'll get back to you. Or if you want to send it directly to me, go to rtr at rosellecare.com. That's rtr at rosellecare.com or Facebook, just Tom Roselle. You'll find it. Go on in, take a look around. I put these kind of things up all the time. We're talking a little bit about sleep habits, right? And I said that you're in a deep state of real deep doo-doo if you don't sleep really well. And, you know, you need to get to bed. You need to do it on a regular basis. You need to do it consistently. And if you're having trouble getting a good night's sleep, there's a lot of things that you can do. Obviously, there are nutrients. There's melatonin. There's CBD oil. Uh, but it may not be enough because we can't find the premise. So start with basics. One, sleep in a completely black room. It should there should be no ambient light. There shouldn't be your computer shouldn't be next to your head. Your your digital clock shouldn't be right next to your ear. It should be dark and it should be slightly cool. It's better to sleep in a cool dark room than any place else. So your bedroom is a place to relax. You have to make sure you have a good bed. Some of you are sleeping on mattresses that have been there forever. Uh, spend the, the, the shekels, go buy yourself something that you'd really like to lie around in. But here's the thing, here's the deal with, with uh, the bedding, right? And meaning the bed, the bedroom itself. After you get rid of everything else, the, tele the cell phones, the, the computers, the, the television, none of that. And you should quiet down as you get ready to go to bed. You need to reduce the noise from outside activities and pets. It's got to be quiet. Uh, consider, I know a lot of you love your, your animals, but you don't, if there is somebody that's going to keep you awake, you may want to consider finding a little bed of their own outside of your bed. So here's the deal. You got to establish a soothing atmosphere. As far as I'm concerned, the bedroom is only for two things. One is sleep and the other one is for intimate relationships. That's it, nothing else. When you're in that bed, only those two things exist, and then that's it. So that's all we're going to say about that, right? So establish a soothing pre-bedtime routine, something that you can begin to realize. You know, we're, we're creatures of habits, and when we establish a routine, we have a greater tendency to fall asleep. Some people, you know, taking a nice warm bath and then reading a good book, something that's relaxing, but not in bed, before you get to bed or some relaxation exercise. And I'm talking breathing. Don't go out and start lifting weights two, three hours before you go to bed. That might help you fall asleep a little faster. If you're having trouble falling asleep, you know, uh, one night, maybe it's better to go someplace else, go into another room, go on to your sofa, but don't do it all the time. Just change it, but make sure all the other criteria are in place. You know, the, the blue blocking glasses that you have for your com computers, do that. What happens is that if you're up and stimulated before you go to bed, you're not going to produce your own melatonin. And it's your body starts producing melatonin around 9 p.m. at nighttime. That's when you start getting a little sleepy, you know, a little tired. Uh, at sundown, you want to start dimming the lights around you, even around 8 o'clock at night, you know, just kind of things down. If you're sitting there listening to the talking heads, you're going to burn yourself out. So get rid of those guys. You don't need to. It's the same old garbage day in and day out. Get rid of the EMFs, all the low volt electromagnetic frequencies that are in your system. You want to exercise on a daily routine, but generally earlier in the day, um, you know, three, maybe four hours before you go to sleep. Do those things. You'll find that it will make a nice difference. Avoid caffeine and alcohol before you go to bed because what's going to happen, it's going to spike your cortisol in the middle of the night and you're going to wake up. You're going to say, oh, what am I doing? And they can't get back to sleep. You know, it's not going to, not going to happen. We're going to talk more about sleep habits over a period of time simply because it's critically important to your health, to your well-being. And if you don't take it seriously, you know, we're all in trouble going to shift gears a little bit. I want to talk about whiplash, right? And whiplash can come in all kinds of different situations. And if you don't pay attention to what the symptoms are, and whiplash, we're not talking about just a car accident. Whiplash also can occur when you're sitting there and you're watching television and you're nodding off, which you should be in bed at that point, And your head just kind of rich, ricochets forward and you go, oh, I got a stiff neck today. 
that's a whiplash as well. And but we ignore it. We don't think it's a big deal, right? My neck's a little stiff today, yada yada yada. But when you think you're getting a whiplash, the first image that comes to your mind is someone's neck being slammed back and forth in a vehicle. Like bang, I got hit. Now, you know, I have had a lot of experience with whiplash. Many of you know that this last March, some young lady decided to careen into my back of my car while I was waiting for a light to change. I'd been over to grab a cup of tea and she hit me at about 45 miles an hour because she was on her cell phone. It's a whole different story. We'll talk about some, that some other time. But s some of the ways that it can happen, uh, you can ha it can happen at, hurt, uh, at work. You can hit your head on something, sports injuries, you, you, you know, but anything that can cause your neck to snap subtly or violently can in fact cause a whipping hyperextension, hyperflexion or hyperflexion, hyperextension injury of the neck, then affecting the brain and the brain stem. The brain stem is where the spinal cord comes down and becomes part of your spine. Actually, the brain is your computer and that controls everything else. So for many individuals, you know, the injury, you know, if it's not too bad, we'll heal pretty quickly. And you're talking about about three months before it's fully resolved, yep, at least three months. But if the vertebrae are misaligned, if there's swelling at the cord level, it can turn into a chronic health problem that will be there for the rest of your life if it's not handled properly. You know, the neck or what we call the cervical spine, you know, makes up part of this whole mess that we call your spinal cord, right? So you have your neck, the cervical spine, you have your middle spine called the thoracic spine, and you have your low back called the lumbar spine. So can somebody heal from something that is significant if someone suffers a, a whiplash whether it's a little one or it's a real big one the short answer is yeah, obviously obviously yes um but in the whipping injury or the hyper extension injury the snapping of the neck uh we can talk about worldwide maybe up to two percent of the population will experience problems that are ongoing that they don't know where it's coming from. That's 2% of 7 billion people. And considering all the people that are walking around and really are not uh, doing much, so it comes into modern society. So when people are in small accidents, you know, minor car accidents, the vehicle sustains little or no damage. Here's the important piece. Because the vehicle does not sustain damage, that energy, that impact, that rear end impact can be experienced by you at up to six to seven gravitational units of force. Think about it this way. A fighter pilot will pass out at six gravitational units on a bank. So we're not talking about minor stuff here, but we don't think about it. If you're going at 12, 13 miles an hour, and there's no damage to your car on impact, or the person that's hitting you is 12, 13 miles an hour, and there's no impact, you have just potentially created a situation that can last you a lifetime if it's not taken care of. Vertebrae go out of position, the spinal cord swells, the covering, which is like saran wrap, it's called dura, hard matter, now gets all discombobulated, if you will, and torqued and pulled and distended. Now, when you have something like that, the next thing that takes place is the release of adrenaline, your fight flight. And then it begins to subside over a period of time. This is when you begin to start feeling the effects of the whiplash. Okay, you don't have that fight flight mechanism going on anymore. And that's why many people, you know, initially they don't accept treatment because they think I'm fine, you know, because you're, you're going on adrenaline. The symptoms that we look at, everything from headaches and neck pain and nausea, uh, limited range of motion, numbness, tingling, any of the extremities, sleep problems. You know, if that brain is swollen, you're not sleeping. Uh, vertigo problems, a little dizziness. Uh, there's something called central cord pain, which means you can have pain all over the place. That's associated with something called fibromyalgia. Uh, and then the fear pattern of not wanting to get in the car again. Or, you're, you know, somebody tells you you got carpal tunnel. Well, you know, there's that. And there's also problems that can affect your heart. And this is where I'm kind of walking into. How many of you have been diagnosed or told that you have some sort of heart fibrillation? That means that your heart is misfiring, whether it's atrial fib, AFib, 
or whether it's ventricular fib or uh, you're throwing extra contractions within your heart, PVCs. If that's the case and nothing, you know, has, you don't know that uh, anything causes as far as pathology damage to the heart. There's nothing wrong with your, your, your valves. It had to come some, from someplace. Remember the heart has three primary neurological inputs. It has the pacemakers directly in the heart. It has the nerves that come from your spine. And then it has a nerve that comes from your brain, one of the cranial nerves. It's called the vagus nerve. Matter of fact, that nerve goes all over the place. We've called it the wanderer. And it touches everything in your body. That nerve can cause problems with the heart because it attaches to something called the SA nodes, sinoatrial nodes. And that controls the rhythm of your heart. So if you have a whiplash and the vertebrae are out of position and now over time because of the swelling that was there, now your body goes into scarring, now you have a chronic problem and guess what happens? You start having these cardiac symptoms that pretty soon may lead into chronic misfiring and the doctor starts wanting to put you on toparol and other medications and blood thinners and the like because, oh my God, you might have a stroke. Instead of answering the question, why did it happen the first time? So if that's the case, you have to answer the question, why? Where did it come from? How do I fix it? And not put up with, well, you're going to have to maybe eventually look forward to a pacemaker. When I had this accident in the spring, I'm in the hospital and I'm in bradycardia, meaning really low heart rate, and my heart is misfiring. I'm an AFib. And these guys are talking about putting a pacemaker in my chest. I said, I don't think so. Not going to happen. Not on this boy's watch because I wanted to know the why. And I went in from bradycardia. Then I flipped over that night into tachycardia. So now I'm at the other end. My heart's going too fast, but I'm still in afibrillation. Knowing what I know, and here's the interesting thing. I said to the physicians, I said, you know, I've probably injured the brainstem affecting the vagus nerve, and now it's causing my heart to misfire. So, well, you know, uh, maybe, uh, rarely, I doubt that's the situation. We really need to, I said, you're not going to touch me. So anyway, here I am months later, and I'm fine. My heart's firing the way it's supposed to. There's no issue. So what did I do? How did I fix that where these guys wanted to put a pacemaker when this is a brainstem injury and causing a miscommunication of the firing mechanism of my heart, which had not been there before. So I started good old fashioned chiropractic care. I had acupuncture on a day to day basis. Dr. Dr. Zhang, who is one of my uh, great docs in our office, you know, he treated me every day. Tons of nutrition, taking all kinds of things, including magnesium 3 and 8 to get the brain to work, decreasing the inflammatory levels uh, within my body. And today I'm good to go. So if I had allowed them to do what they wanted to do, meaning a monoptic view of the condition that was going on and not look at it globally and collect uh, and, and take into consideration the information that was really there physiologically relative to the control of the heart, you know, right now I'd have a little pacing device in my chest that was not okay. Now, this happens on an ongoing basis. And the reason I bring this up is that so many of you are showing symptoms of things that nobody has ever been able to say, this is where it's coming from. This is how it started. This is you know, uh, what we need to do to fix it. But let's do this to fix the symptom that's associated with this. And when you fix the symptom, you have other pieces of the puzzle that will begin to break down over a period of time. A whiplash, whether it's old from playing sports, soccer, football, wrestling, martial arts, whether you hit your head on, on the kitchen cabinet or the trunk of your car, whether you were in a car accident that even hit you at about 15 miles an hour because now your body absorbed the impact of that, now has set up a perfect storm where not only do you have the pain and the tingling and the numbness, the weakness, the decrease in movement, but now you have visceral problems, symptoms that have put you on high blood pressure medication, have put you on blood thinners, have put you on uh, cardiac regulatory medica medications like toparol and so forth, where you don't have to do that. There's other things that can be done if it's a neurologically based problem. So what you need to do is if you've got a problem like that, give us a call. We're more than happy to take a look at that. 
Just go to RizalCare.com, send us a note, we'll get an appointment. We'll tell you whether something can be done or not. If we can fix it, we can fix it. If we can't, we'll tell you exactly what we would do as well. We're coming up to a break. I have so much I want to tell you today and so little time to get it done in. But we'll be right back after some very important information. Don't go away. Washington's Mall, 105.9 FM, WMAL. Welcome back, everybody. Dr. Tom Rizal here. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizal live as you do every Sunday. Since we tell you where we're, we can get them the data that they need to do to help themselves and continue to make you better than you are today. That's why we do the program, by the way. And again, we want to extend our thanks to all of our military who happen to find us and continue to send us information on what can I do about this? What can I, can you direct me on this? And we're there for you. All you have to do is send me a note either to rosellcare.com or simply straight to an email at rtr at rosellcare.com. And I promise you, I will get back to you. It's uh, what we do, and that's our mission, to serve you at the highest levels that we possibly can. Talking a whole lot about a lot of things today, from you know sleeping and making sure your brain is in a good place, and seriously, you know, recapping that a little bit, you got to sleep, and you have to sleep the right way, and you can't sleep with all the the devices. You can't sleep if the room is hot. You can't sleep, you know, if there's any kind of ambient anything. If you've been jacked up listening to the talking heads, you know, before you go to bed, you're not going to sleep very well. You have to sleep. And that, as I said, in that bedroom, that place that you go to get rid of the rest of the day, it's only there for two reasons. This is exactly what it should be. One is make sure that you're sleeping there only. Don't bring anything else into bed with you except for the person that is the most intimate in your life. And then, you know, that's on you. But nevertheless, then you fall asleep together, right? Having said that, look, here's the deal. Your bedroom is your safety heaven that restores your body so you can go out and fight the, the animals again. But if you don't have that opportunity, if you don't do it on a regular basis, you're in trouble. You're going to have the inability to repair things. We talked a little bit about whiplash, and whiplash can come from many different impacts. It can come from a car accident. It can come from a ski accident. It can come from soccer. It can come from football. It can come from wrestling. It can come from a fight. When you were a kid, you fell off of something. It goes on. The list is crazy, right? And it doesn't have to be that significant. But the effect, the impact, the problem can be far-reaching to the point that it can affect heart, heart function slowly insidiously over a long period of time your blood pressure begins to sneak up your heart rate goes in crazy situations either up or down don't ignore that don't just take medication there's a lot that can be done to restore things back to normal we want your brain to work we want you to be clear and thoughtful all the time we want you to be able to have the ability to be your own director you know my book that i wrote a few years back Ageless Health. Health is a do-it-yourself program. It's still available. You can get it through our website. Go to rosehealthcare.com. You can order it that way or call the office. We'll send one out to you. But here's the reason I wrote it. I wrote that book simply to give you the tools, the understanding to heal yourself, to know what it takes, to not be a lemming. I hate to use that term, but it's true, right? That you follow somebody that wants to treat symptoms and all the things, all the letters that they're coming up with, the ABC of medi uh, medications these days. If you have this syndrome and they give you a bunch of letters, take this medication, ask your doctor if this medication's right for you. You're not the physician. And these guys, sometimes I wonder how much of a doctor that they really are when they're just giving you a medication to see if that will work for you. Isn't it better to find out what impact it's really having neurologically, an impact that it's having biochemically, an impact that may be going on through energetic platforms and so forth, and fix those things? If you fix those things, you might get your life back. You might live a little longer. You might understand that you can't be putting garbage into the fuel tank and expect it to run forever because it's gonna corrode, it's gonna break down, it's gonna be destroyed. That's why we do the program. That's why we do it 
every week and give you the most intimate health care information we possibly can. And as I said to you repetitively, there's only one reason that I continue doing it after 43 years. Very simply, I love you all. See you next week. Bye. Are you dental phobic? Do you neglect your dental health because of fear and anxiety? A beautiful smile begins with exceptional dental care, and you can trust in the expertise of Soft Touch Dental Care and Dr. Michael Chung. Soft Touch Dental Care is unlike any dentist office you'll ever experience. Their warm and welcoming environment is designed to soothe fears and anxiety the moment you arrive, and they're especially pleased to pamper their honored guest patients. Dr. Michael Chung is a professional and leading expert in all areas of comprehensive dentistry, including cosmetic, sedation, neuromuscular, TMJ, and implant dentistry. Offering state-of-the-art technology, Dr. Chung can give you the smile of your dreams. Arrange for a complimentary consultation today with Dr. Michael Chung and experience the expertise that makes Dr. Michael Chung so unique. Call 703-319-6990. That's 703-319-6990. Or visit bestinsmile.com. That's bestinsmile.com. This is Dr. Tom Rosell, author of Ageless Health, Health Is, a Do-It-Yourself Program. My book, now also available in audio version, is a step-by-step -step program of how to take control of your health and wellness without drugs or needless surgery. You have the capacity to change your health and level of well-being. Take control of your health today and order Health Is a Do-It-Yourself Program. For more information and to order, please visit agelesshealthbook.com. That's agelesshealthbook.com. Breast cancer is a major health risk to all women. It can silently grow uninterrupted for years. The Thermography Centers of Fairfax reminds all women to conduct monthly and annual breast exams. Consider a thermography scan from the Thermography Centers as an adjunct to your routine breast exams. Digital infrared thermal imaging is safe and non-invasive. For more information and to schedule an appointment, call 703-520-7591 or visit thermographycenters.com.